Hi guys, today we'll be reviewing a 2021 movie called Shook. All the details will be in the pinned comment below. So let's get right into the movie. As the movie begins, we see three social media influencers posing in front of the media photo shoot. Among them is Janelle, the brand ambassador for Sikani Cosmetics. Mid photo section, Janelle's pet dog wets her dress and she's forced to go to the restroom to clean it. While cleaning her dress, Janelle is spooked by a sudden strange sound that her dog follows. Being curious, she goes to check and calls out to her dog. However, she's suddenly attacked by a stranger who kills her by stabbing her with her own shoe. Next, we see Mia, another aspiring social media influencer who is present during the photo shoot. Through her live stream, Mia announces that, as a tribute, she won't be streaming tomorrow. Instead, she'll visit her sister Nicole's house to babysit their dog, Chico. However, her friends are not happy with her decision and insists that she stream, as she has the most followers in their circle. However, late that night, we see Mia in her sister's house. Through a video message, we learn that Nicole has been taking care of their late sick mother while Mia was busy with her social media thing. As Mia is in her mother's room, Nicole reveals through a text that she's installed a camera there which also detects motion. Next, Mia is on the bed using her laptop to browse Nicole's profile. As she's browsing through her posts, she gets a friend request from the neighboring boy, Kellen Parker. So she immediately informs Nicole about it. She then learns that Kellen's parents have been arrested for child pornography. Therefore, she decides to ignore Kellen's request and goes on to view her friend's stream. She sees her friends, which include Lanny, Jade, and her boyfriend, Santi, having fun together. Moments later, she gets another request from the same guy, Kellen, which spooks her. As a result, she commands Diana, the virtual assistant technology, to lock all the doors and windows of the house. After that, she continues watching her friend's stream and gets jealous when Santi gets close to Lanny. She begins having second thoughts about their relationship and even imagines Santi making out with Lani. Shortly after, she begins chatting with Jade, who urges her to join them. However, Mia rejects her offer and informs her that she cannot come over as long as Nicole is in San Francisco for a checkup. As it turns out, Mia's mother died of a terminal disease called Livingston's disease, which was transmitted to her sister Nicole as well. Luckily, Mia is still safe and has shown no signs of it. Soon she gets lost in her chat with Jade and loses sight of Chico. Eventually, she realizes this and goes down to look for her. At first, she calls out to her a few times but cannot find her. She even tries contacting her friend Jade, but she doesn't pick up her phone. Soon, fear and panic fill her mind, as she still cannot find her sister's dog. She even begins thinking that her friends are ignoring her. Later, she gets a call and voicemail from an unknown number, but she doesn't pick it up. Soon, she gets a text from her boyfriend, Santi, and she tells him about the lost dog. But Santi doesn't seem to care about it and tells her to relax, quoting, It's just a dog. Moments later, she gets a call from the same unknown number, but this time she receives the call. As it turns out, it's Nicole's neighbor Kellen who's inquiring about his lost dog rascal. She tries to hang up on him quickly, but Kellen tries his best to carry on the conversation. Later, Kellen reveals that he's friends with Jade, which shocks Mia. Nevertheless, she hangs up on the call and continues her search for Chico. She then goes out into the backyard, but is spooked by a sudden thudding noise. Out of fear, she quickly gets back in and shuts the door. Soon, she gets another call from Kellen, who tells him that he heard her calling out to Chico. Kellen then advises her to check under the bed, as he's been told that Chico usually hides there. Mia is shocked to hear that he knows so much about their family, but still, she follows his advice and goes to look for Chico in Nicole's room. Moments later, Jade texts her that Lanny is flirting with Santi, and she should come here to stop her. Kellen, on the other hand, seems to be observing their conversation somehow and calls Lanny a slut. Confused about the situation, Mia tries to confront Kellen, but he doesn't answer. Eventually, Mia checks under Nicole's bed, but is terrified to find bloodstains all over the place. She quickly realizes that Kellen is somehow linked with the incident and asks about him. Finally, Kellen reveals that he's got her dog and hangs up the phone. Terrified of the situation, she immediately calls 911. While she waits for her call to get connected, she gets a text from Kellen informing her that if she doesn't hang up the call, her friends will die. At first, she doesn't believe him, but when she sees the photos of her friends in distress, she immediately hangs up the 911 call. Having no options left, Mia decides to make a run out of the house, but unfortunately, she cannot find her keys. Soon, she gets a call from Jade who informs her that if she tries to leave, Kellen will kill her. Moments later, she gets a call from Kellen who sets up some ground rules for her to follow. Meanwhile, Mia is super confused about why all these things are happening to her. 
Kellen then says that she was supposed to look after the dog as instructed by her sister, but instead she spent her time talking to her friends. Soon Kellen tells her that she needs to choose between Chico and her friend Lanny. At first she refuses to answer, but when the situation intensifies, she finally chooses Lanny. Kellen then instructs her to go back inside the house, but Mia instantly refuses. Therefore, as an encouragement, he sends her a video of him torturing Nicole. Once she's back inside the house, Mia is terrified to see bloodstains all over the place, and also her room is totally messed up. Soon she receives another call from Kellen and lashes out at him for all that's happened so far. This time, Kellen presents her with three questions. The condition is that if she answers all three questions correctly, he'll end all of this and let everyone go. However, if she fails to answer any one of the questions, Mia will be forced to choose between her sister Nicole and her boyfriend Santi. Her first question is, when administering CPR, what song is recommended for achieving the correct tempo to maintain the proper rhythm? However, Mia has absolutely no idea about this and quickly starts browsing the internet for the answer. Finally, she finds the answer, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Without allowing her to take a proper breath, Kellen quickly moves to the next question, but prohibits her from using the internet this time. Her next question is, at what temperature is someone considered to have a fever? Moments later, she receives another video in which we see Jade being tortured under a candle. But Mia has no time to worry for Jade right now as she has to find the answer. As the time runs out, Mia starts searching her mother's room filled with medicines and medical devices. She finally finds the answer in one of the medical reports, stating the temperature is 100.4 Fahrenheit. Having answered two questions correctly, Mia eventually starts feeling confident about herself and asks for the third question. However, she's shocked to hear the final question. What were her mother's last words? Soon, she receives yet another torture video. This time, it's Lani, whose tongue is being pulled out using tweezers. Coming back to the question, Mia has no idea about her mother's last words, as she was not there when she died. On the call, Kellen confronts her for not being there for her mother during her dying moments, even though Nicole informed her. At last, the time runs out, and Kellen reveals that her mother used a breathing tube during her last few weeks. As a result, she died without saying anything, and Mia feels guilty for forgetting such an important detail. Now, Mia is forced to choose between Lani and Nicole, but she cannot make a choice and starts becoming increasingly frustrated with the situation. Finally, having no options left, she decides to choose Lani over Nicole, as Nicole has been diagnosed with a terminal disease. Realizing that she just put her own sister to a death sentence, she breaks down and starts crying. After a while, she gets a call from Lani. In a surprising turn of events, Lani is seen totally fine and reveals that all of this was a fake stunt. She, together with Jade and Santi, pranked her, and all of this was live-streamed on her page. Lani further reveals that they used a voice changer app to call her on Kellen's behalf. Lani also informs her that they're in her attic right now. Filled with rage, she lashes out at them and cuts the call. She then checks Lanny's profile and all of this is proved to be true. Lanny's profile is filled with live streams of them being inside their house doing pranks. Later, Mia wishes to talk to her sister, so she calls the hotel she's staying at. Over the phone, she apologizes to her sister for not being there for her and her mother. However, Nicole doesn't believe her and asks for Chico. But Mia lies to her, saying Chico is there and with her on the couch, even though she has no idea where she is. Eventually, Nicole reveals that she knows Lani, Jade, and Santi are there with her, as she got notifications from the camera installed in their mother's room. Finally, she's had enough of her friends and shouts at them to come down. Moments later, she gets a call from Lani and we see someone slit her throat. She also receives multiple texts from Jade and Santi claiming something's wrong and it's serious this time. However, Mia doesn't believe a word they say and still thinks that they're pranking her. Eventually, she finds Lanny's dead body in the pool and starts screaming. Just then, she receives a text from Kellen, saying all of this was true from the beginning, and now she's once again left with a choice. Next, Mia goes to the living room as instructed by Kellen and finds a box of injections. Her choice is that she has to inject all of them into herself, otherwise, Santi dies. Having no options left, despite the pain, Mia begins injecting herself with the injections one by one. Finally, she's done with every single injection, except for one whose needle is broken. Worried about her boyfriend, she quickly rushes towards her bedroom to check up on him. Unfortunately, she finds Santi lying on the floor, covered in blood. Moments later, she receives a call from Jade, who informs her that they agreed to do this because they were offered a lot of money. Mia cannot believe her friend simply sold her out for a sum of cash. Suddenly, she hears a noise from the next room and goes out to check. 
After arming herself with a knife, to her surprise, she finds her mother's corpse inside the closet. She has no idea what's going on, as she also finds a laptop connected to all the cameras inside the house. In a surprising turn of events, it's revealed that Nicole is behind all of this. Nicole reveals that she's punishing her for not being with them when their mother was sick. Mia apologizes for all that has happened, but still, Nicole is not convinced and is hell-bent on punishing her sister. Eventually, Mia is presented with yet another choice. This time, she has to break her leg within five minutes or Nicole will kill Jade. While she tries to break her leg using a baseball bat, she gets a notification that the driver she booked earlier has come to pick her up. She quickly texts him to go away and jumps off the first floor to break her legs in the last few remaining seconds. As Mia lies on the floor, screaming in pain, Nicole finally appears in front of her. She then reveals that she used their mother's pension money to pay her friends for the prank. She also expresses her disappointment that she didn't pick her own sister when she was forced to choose between her and Lanny. This makes Nicole realize that Mia won't be there to take care of her when she faces the same fate as their mother. Meanwhile, Mia tries her best to reason with her and says that she's become mentally unstable because of Livingston's disease and this is not her true self. Finally, Nicole takes out a gun and gets ready to kill herself and Mia. Moments later, they hear a knock on the door and Nicole goes to check. As it turns out, it's Kellen who's come to drop off Chico whom he found outside. Before leaving, Kellen demands to meet Mia, but Nicole shoots him in the chest, leading to his death. When she returns, she notices that Mia has gone missing along with her dog Chico. Meanwhile, Mia uses the opportunity to livestream and informs her huge fan following about everything that's happened so far. Eventually, Nicole finds Mia and the sisters engage in a fight for survival while the whole world watches this on Mia's livestream. After a brief struggle, Mia knocks her out and makes her way outside the house with Chico. Lastly, Mia is seen lying on the driveway while Nicole wakes up and closes the livestream. The movie ends.